Just an okay. Welcome to uh, the planning meeting um, taking place on uh, Tuesday, the 20th of June, 2023, at 5.30. I have to read out the, uh, the blurb about recording. Uh, this meeting is being recorded and will be uploaded to the Biddletown Council YouTube page. The aim is that decision making should be transparent and in the public domain, which will involve more of our community in local democracy. By being in this council chamber, you are consenting to being recorded and for your image to be added to YouTube. The images and sound may be used for training purposes. Any views expressed are the speaker's own and do not necessarily reflect the view of Biddletown Council. Please view the guidance on recording in public meetings policy if you need more information. Thank you. Right, we'll start. Have we got any apologies, sir? Uh, yes, we have. Uh, we've got apologies from Councillor Smith, Proudlove, and Holdsworth. Okay. Uh, declarations of interest, disclosable pecuniary interests and dispensations. Have we got any? Any other interests? If any crop up when we're going through the plans, then we need to shout up. Uh, item 14, minutes to approve the minutes from the planning committee meeting held on the 23rd of May, 2023. These have gone to town council. Um, you want me to go through them or are you quite happy for me to just sign them? You sign them, Jeff. Fine. Fine. Yeah. Everybody in favour of that? Okay, thank you. Chair, for me, I'll send my apologies for that one. Oh, sorry, yes, for the other, sorry, apologies. Apologies. Right, uh, item 15, a standing agenda item to consider any proposed sites for local listing. Now, uh, Sarah has sent an email out, um, which basically was one that Esther sent to Ben Haywood and effectively record or identified of 1 and 3 Wolf Road, 56 High Street, the Conservative and Unionist Club, Family Pizza, the gymnasium on Wharf Road and Stonewall Three Wharf Road, um, as basically local heritage nominations. Um, do you want to sort of update us on that? From what's that, anything that's happened on board? Uh, not a lot is the answer to that. So um, it's quite some time ago that the original email was sent to the planning department of the district, and we knew at the time that they didn't really have a lot of additional capacity to deal with that. Um, I understand that there is a new, I've put this in a note to you this afternoon by email, but, but for the record, uh, there's a new uh, conservation officer who has within her remit to look at these local listings. Um, and the idea, as we've spoken about before, is that they are, um, that then becomes a local heritage register, which identifies the importance of these buildings locally. Um, and then it doesn't have the same protection, obviously, as, as listing as such. Uh, you know, grade one, grade two, and the like. Um, but it does hopefully provide some um, protection and some um, people are aware. People are aware of the massive yeah, yeah. yeah. through planning applications. Yeah, I mean, so that was the purpose of them. So we're still progressing with these ones that were the original ones that uh, Esther and Hilda had put together. Um, and then, you know, previous to, to this council, we've spoken about having this as a standing agenda item in case anybody had wanted to add any additional sites to that. So we can uh, continue to update you on that and also to um, add any others, you know, within this format as you see fit. As any, I say, Councillor Redfern, sorry, I'm sorry. Take it, and this is the boundaries of Biddle as a whole, not just town centre. The whole parish. Yeah. yeah. Councillor Jones. Uh, yeah, thank you, Chair. Uh, just something we, uh, Councillor Yates alluded to as potential purchase uh, 
couple of meetings back, and, and that's with considered the chapel for our news. Okay. I know it's in a very poor state, but uh, maybe we should they should be on the list. That could be on the list, but they, we could complete that at some paperwork for that. I think we should. So we don't know what's going to happen or attempt to be happening. I'm not sure actually if it's listed within its own right, so we could we could add that to them. Um, I could do some investigating. Yeah. But by all means, email me between meetings as well, and I can bring them back to this meeting to see, you know, see, see mm -hmm. what paperwork's been done and what work we need to do on it. Yeah. Was there, any, was there anybody at this end? I thought I saw a hand <laughs> at this end of the room. No. Okay, Council. Yeah, do we have a complete list of those that are already listed? Uh, this is the first <clears throat> kind of tranche, as it were, of us trying to get things locally listed. Yeah. So we're, well, a year on. And we're still <laughs> working on it. Okay. So we can, yeah, but we're still very much in the start process, unfortunately. If, if I remember rightly, at the last meeting, did we say we were going to send an email out to all councillors and ask them if they'd got any? Um... Can do. I've sent these just so that you can see. Yeah, no, I know. I thought we were going to ask all councillors if they, got, they would actually want to consider. Yeah. So um, it might be worth actually putting something out. Before the next planning meeting. Yeah, that's fine. So the, I've, I've sent you these so that you can see the nomination. Yeah. Board. So if you just click into when you get when you get it, you can see the sorts of information that we collect with regards to these, and then we have to justify its inclusion. Put a, a map, um, and a photo, and then obviously it goes what, through whatever process it goes through at the district. Any more comments? Talking. We've been sent this email. I've not seen that. Today, yeah. Oh, today? Yeah, yes, yeah. it was this afternoon, <laughs> so it's probably... <laughs> you didn't need to read it before tonight, but I thought if you've got it in your inbox, then you can yeah, right. digest it at your leisure then. OK, um, anybody, any comments on that? No. Nope. OK, then on to item 16, to receive a verbal update on progress for the Neighbourhood Plan and Neighbourhood Development Order. Any progress since the last meeting? Uh, no, the district have had um, a document that I've put together with the uh, changes to the whole document, yeah. you know, kind of missed bullet points and changes to um, the NPPF, which is the planning document. Um, some of the references that were in our original have now changed because that NPPF has been updated. Um, so I have the sort of three sides of, of changes that need to be made to the document. And then in addition to that, uh, um, Overvision have re again redrafted some of the policies. So that's with the District Council now for their feedback. Mm. And hopefully we're not too far from, from the end of that. And then the, I believe that the process then will be that report will go to the District Council Cabinet and then hopefully we can move towards a referendum, probably autumn time, I think we're hoping yeah. that do we have to um, get the document changed? Yeah. And have we got to actually go back to the people who did it before, or are you looking at alternatives at that? Yeah. So if you um, if you look at the neighbourhood plan on the website, it's we had it really nicely designed, mm -hmm. didn't we? Um, and that means that we've got to either find somebody with that software or go back to the original publishing company to do that. Um, but I think when we're at that point, we should be again eligible for some of the neighbourhood plan mm. grants. So I'll we'll hopefully get the costs of that covered through a real grant if that's possible, okay. rather than having mm. to come back to you and say it'll be yeah. how much it is for the amendment. Okay. Mind any comments? No. Item 17 to receive an update on town council planning applications. They are for the town hall frontage. Sarah sent an email out covering this, which is going to be considered at the planning, SMDC Planning Committee on the 13th of July. And the Overton Road drinking troughs. Um, this is for listed building consent. We have an approval one from Morden's Partnership Board to reinstate one of the missing drinking troughs, match funding. We've already been granted consent for this once, but waited 18 months for highways to install bollards, and then we were delayed by the pandemic. When this is approved, the stonemason will add the new trough and restore the existing framework. In addition, there has added the local listing. Oh, no, get that back. That's basically where we are. Mr. Jackson. Yeah, I noticed in not last week's Chronicle, the Chronicle before, I deal looking back, there was a section in there about one of those troughs, and it was um, 
Barry Stanway had got some money from SMDC to repair these troughs, and that was 10 years ago. 25 years ago, <coughs> Mr. Machin had bought a pony and trap to get into the pub. That's just, you know, this takes a while sometimes, doesn't it? Yeah. <laughs> Well, they, they, we actually had some planning permission for these sometimes, not not that long, I'll say sometime, not that long ago was when I was on planning committee where so there was some work done on We did. So yeah. so the listed building consent we've had already, so I'm not anticipating that this is going to be refused again. And that's the that's the feeling that we've had from the planning officer. Trouble was that one of the conditions that needed to be, be met with it was that bollards were installed on the same side as the trap. We, it was absolutely not a priority task. You know, we had, we identified the, the health and safety risks, but it took a while for highways to do it. But unfortunately, because we hadn't started on the troughs, we'd started on the conditions, we've had to put it in again. So we did have that argument, and the architect had that argument with the planners as well, that actually, why would we put the troughs in before we put ballards in? Um, but that didn't. I'd do it again. Okay. All right. Thank you, James. Yeah, uh, thank you, Jay. Yeah. Um, have we um, had any indication from the planning office as to what the recommendation is to the committee? Or whether it's whether it's refusal or, or approval, and if it's approval, is it because I presume it's going to committee because it, it warrants some discussion, obviously, and that can't be just because of the size of it. Is it because it's a it's a council one? That is that does it have to go to committee by statute? Or is it because there are some conditions that they want discussed in the film? And if that had to happen, is somebody from here expected to go and speak to it? I assume it's going to committee because it's us. Um, and because it's public buildings. Hmm. I don't think it's been called in. So it hasn't gone no. through that process. No, I do. You'd know better than that, but I would, I think, anyway. I think. No, no. no, no. Um, I just wondered what if we'd had any any feedback at all from the planning officer to say what is because it will go on to the recommendation. The, as far as I know, it's still writing the report. Right, so it's There's lots of backwards and forwards and discussions. Okay. Um, it it's it, there's some frustration around that as well. I think from our perspective, because there's only one very small aspect of the project that actually requires. Planning permission, and that's the the wall with the wall yeah, bricks. Um, so it's the one that the the uh, wheel will sit on, mm. um, and it's because of that's classed as engineering work. That's why we've had to go for planning permission. Otherwise, it could be permitted development. So it's one tiny piece of the bigger scheme is the reason we've had to put in a planning application. So it was crossed then. Wouldn't anticipate it be refused. We see, as far as I see, we've met all the conditions and the questions that have been put forward so far. And we've, and you know, our architects liaised with highways and with the district council assets team, but I haven't seen the report yet. Oh, no, 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 I was just interested to know if we had any feedback at all. Yeah. Sit in and have a word. If, if this is going to planning committee, would it be advisable that one of the town councillors, or say one of the town councils, one of the towns? District councillors actually went to that. Well, anybody? Well, mate, uh, you'll be there with you then. I'm. Yeah, if, if I was intending to go. <laughs> yeah, I was. I could. I could always go as the ward councillor, you see, and also the district councillor. So that would give a little bit uh, allow me to speak, and then I can uh, explain the rationale so everybody's on board. But certainly, uh, I think yeah. everybody who needs to be on it is on board. Both of the previous administration who saw the logic and the, the current administration from a regeneration point of view, so it should be okay. Okay, thank you. Right. Yeah, through the chair, I think yeah. it might be, if you have, it might be worth looking to speak. If you can't just stand up to speak. And then if you don't need to speak, you, yep. you can sit down and not speak. Okay. Yeah. I'll find something to say. <laughs> <laughs> you wouldn't need it, I don't think, somebody to. No, don't want to get past. <laughs> okay, as long as, as long as we've got somebody there, I'll be. Okay, nothing else on that then? Yes. Okay, then we'll move on to uh, new planning applications. The first one is SMD 2023-0225. Oh, by the way, I sent a thing out. But was it useful to how to get through the uh, the planning process of 
looking at the plans and what have you. I mean, if there's anything else you need to know, then shout up. Okay. Um, so SMD 2023-0225, Mr. and Mrs. Beathwaite's Seven Cedar Grove, Middlefmore. Which proposed single story side extension, proposed single story rear extension, a proposed garage, and a proposed fire rated oil tank cover. No pre application advice, materials will match existing. Uh, the existing prefab garage will be demolished, the oil tank relocated, and a new garage will be to the front of the property. Extensions on the side to form a bedroom and ensuite. The current attached garage will be converted to a utility and study. The rear extension will be used to extend the kitchen and create a dining and sitting room and will replace the existing extension. And there'll be a new pitched roof over the extensions. The garage is a single to the front of the property with rearranged access. Tank cover is finished with co uh, corrugated metal cladding. It's at the end of a cul-de-sac. There's objections from an adjoining property. A sighting of garage will affect light into property and garden. An objection from a neighbour rear the roof height, which will affect the light into the bedrooms of their property. And my view was I've got concerns over the light issues into neighbouring properties, and I, I reckon, unless this committee addressed, we recommend refusal. Councillor Garvey. Thank you, Chair. I think looking at the location, the two objections, where they're coming from, I think the first one regarding the garage is slightly spurious because of the location and where it is. Um, the second one I can see is... is Fully legitimate because of the the higher uh, property, I think, a few feet higher than the, and that could easily be about easily easily be addressed by pitching the roof in the other direction yeah, away from yeah. the property. So I think it could be addressed very very easily, but I think it's a legitimate concern for that particular yeah. property. Yeah, Councillor Jones. Yeah, thank you, Chair. I'm slightly quibbled earlier on this one, and I think I agree with uh, Councillor Garvey. If they are a bit squashed in the Cedar Group, I mean, you know, it's, it's quite a tight development. Uh, I think I, I agree with you. I think at the moment, as it stands, we should recommend it. We haven't got it done there. So the uh, one itself. So, in, in terms of what we actually put forward, do we want to recommend refusal um, or do we want to basically say, we, we but as I said, We've got concerns over the light issues, and basically, then, unless we need addressing, we recommend a refusal. I'd be happy to. Yeah, I think, yes, thank you, Chair. I think in this issue, you know, something which is going absolutely up to the boundary, this, this is a, a tale where people should be looking for pre planning advice so that they can be guided on what's acceptable before they put the planning application in. Mm -hmm. uh, because Obviously, you know, they've maximised the absolute foot, absolute footprint of the plot and as a consequence that is going to cause shadow around. So I think if there's a tale to be to be learned from this for, for future uh, planning applications is that's what the pre-planning advice is there for. It's not, another, it's not just another way of saying, oh, let's get a little bit more money out of the residents. It's actually there to guide people to make sure that we don't have to have these potential discussions with refusal, because to be perfectly honest, as it stands at this moment in time, I can't disagree with, with what you put in your recommendation. Yeah. I mean, if anybody ever asks me about it, the mm. first thing I say to them is go and talk to the planners, because obviously, you know, if you're putting a planning application in, why put something in that you potentially could get refused? I think you make common sense to actually go and talk to them um, and get their view as to what you can get through. Um, so oh, is, is everybody happy with that then as a recommendation? Yeah. Yeah. Yes. So okay. you're refusing so say the light we issues? Concern, we recommend refusal unless they can address the light issues. Yeah. I mean, the thing is they could actually change or that they could actually put something in as a, um, as one of the conditions to actually yeah. do something about it. That's what it's dating. Right, the next one is... SMD 2022-067, and it's Mr. Dave Proudlove, Bedeside Biddleph, and it's for 62-fold lane, an upward rear extension to create a bedroom, an ensuite in the roof space, an insertion of two roof lights to the front of the property. And it's basically, I've said, seen as the applicant is a town councillor, who won't comment on that, which is the usual thing that we do. Everybody happy with that? Yeah. Yes. Next one is 2023-0271, Mr. and Mrs. Daniels, Hillview Farm, Tower Hill Road. 
Erection of an agricultural livestock building and muck storage area. Uh, no pre-application advice. The walls will be concrete panelling cladded with natural timber and the roof will be grey fibre roof sheets. The floor space is 371 square metres. It's 30.848 metres by 12.19 metres to a maximum, and it's a maximum of 7.33 metres high and the roof has got roof lights. It's an existing farmyard it's a new building to the rear of the farmyard and it seems to be well away from the road and it's to allow the applicants to stop livestock farming. Um, basically, it's an existing farm. I recommend approval on that. Yeah. Are you all happy with that? No? I was going to say as long as it doesn't contravene Greenbelt. As long as it doesn't contravene Greenbelt. Yeah, you can put that in, yeah. But normally, farming is allowed within Greenbelt. Yeah. Yeah. There's yeah. been a few though, a few more that have been yeah. recently. Yeah, you can put that, yeah we, we can we can we can add that in as long as it doesn't recommend approval subject to it not contravening group belt. Yeah. In my opinion, it's massive. Yeah. It's a massive building, and I know recently there's been a couple refused up middle four. You can't do different for one. So basically we recommend approval then uh, subject to not contravening green belt. Okay. And the last one is 2023-0239, Mr. Terry Mahoney, Frog Meadow Farm, Medicide Biddulph. It's a lawful development certificate for an existing use, a demolition of an existing hexagonal sun lounge and replacing with a single storey orangery. No pre-application advice. It's an application for a lawful development certificate for existing use, including those in breach of planning conditions. Existing use is a C3, which is a dwelling house, and the LDC is, as we mentioned above, the grounds. Its use as a single dwelling house began more than four years before this application. The work was completed on the 1st of May 2023. The new building is at the rear of property, away from any neighbours. The new build is bigger than any, uh, bigger than the existing. And I... As it meets the conditions for lawful development certificates, I'd recommend approval. Um, anybody, any comment? No. We're quite happy with that then. Richard. Right. Yeah. Right. That won't do. Uh, item 19, there's no supplementary applications. Item 20, new decisions and notices received from the district. Um, 2022-0609, we said proof subject to no adverse comments from County Highways, and it was actually thrown out. And one of the reasons given was the proposed development by reason of the height of the wall located close to the highway will cause poor visibility splay and therefore have a negative impact on highway safety. So we did pick that up. And I think that's the only one that we've got. Any sort of... Comment on. Has anybody got any others who want to comment on? No. I still, Chair, I just thought it was interesting that the Cherry Tree Lane one had been withdrawn. Pardon, John. Just no, I was interested to know that the Cherry Tree Lane one, which we had to refuse, uh, which was the very small plot on Cherry Tree Lane. Uh, we had to, well, it was withdrawn. I think we, we recommended approval. It was yeah. withdrawn. I just thought. Uh, yeah, but basically, the yeah, subject highways and utility condition. Mm. And we're basically also that it must be single story. Yeah. So they've withdrawn it. No idea why they've withdrawn it unless they've decided on trying some other way of doing it. Unless the planners have come back and said to them, you've got a problem doing this, that, or whatever else. No idea. Um, sure, it'll reappear. Sure, it'll reappear. Oh, yeah. If, if they, if they want to, I'm sure they want to do something because they want to move the drive and all sorts of that. Um, Item 11, we haven't got any appeals. On that note, at six minutes to six, I'll close the meeting. Thank you, my lord, Jack. Well, thank you.